Hey everyone. Okay, so for tonight and tomorrow night's homework um, that's due on Friday, and we'll, um, let's go ahead and go through this. I'm going to use some graph paper. Feel free anytime that you need to get some from in front of my desk and take some home or use during class. Your help yourself to it. Let's take a look at the first problem. We're going to be multiplying 47 times 4. I'm going to start in the ones place. 4 times 7 equals 28. I'm regrouping. And now it's 4 times 4 is 16, 17, 18. And so the answer or the product is 188. And I'm going to place that right here. If you show your work, you can do it here. There's room for it. Or if you're doing it on a separate sheet of paper, you'll just staple those together. Uh, you can staple them when you get into class. All right, so we're going to use the properties to find the sum or the product. This one right here, it's simply going to be the commutative property that we talked about. This one right here, I have three factors that are involved. So I'm going to use the associative property, which deals with groupings. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this first. So this is number one. This is two. So I'm going to multiply 40 times three. I know that there's only one zero, so I'm going to place that into my product. Three times four is 12. So this becomes 120. And I'm going to bring down the six. So I have 120 times 6, 6 times 0 is 0, 6 times 2 is 12, and I'm regrouping. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7, so the answer is 720, or the product is what we should be saying. Let's go to number 3. Number 3. Again, I have more than two and three, this is four. So I'm going to use the associative property for my groupings. And remember, I will be doing the parentheses first. So I'm gonna actually put parentheses here and I'm gonna put another set of parentheses here because it will make it easier. So I'm going to add 34 plus 21. I can put it on here or I can do place value where I have five plus one. I mean, I'm so sorry, I did it again, didn't I? <laughs> one plus four is five. Three plus two is five, and that becomes 55. Plus seven plus four equals 11. Bring down my one, regroup. Seven plus eight is 15 plus one more is 16. And then my answer is one. Six plus one, uh, five, one plus five is six. Okay, I saw where my mistake is at. Let's go back over here. This is incorrect. Guys, I want you to be in the habit of not making erasing marks where you're just gonna cross it out. So I have seven plus four is 11, and then it's carried, this is only a seven, so it's eight, nine, and it's 91. Then one plus five is six, nine plus five is 14, and it's 146. If that makes it more difficult for you, simply stack, going to the standard form of 34 plus 21, four plus one equals five, three plus two equals five. I'm gonna take my next grouping and that is 84 plus seven. Seven plus four is 11, regroup my one. Eight plus one is nine. Now I can add these two partial sums together. And I'm gonna bring it over here to 91 plus 55, five plus one equals six, and five plus nine is 14. We still come up with the same sum. This one I did side by side 
place value, this one here, I did my standard form. Let's look at this next one. It says on number four and for five, it says complete the equation and tell which property you used. All right, so let's complete this. This first number sentence reads, or the first equation reads, because it has an equal sign, 103 plus 21. Then I have equals something plus 103. I'm gonna place my 21 here. I'm gonna keep the same add-ins. And I know that it's gonna be a balanced equation because whatever 103 plus 21 is will equal 21 plus 103. Which property is this? This is what we talked about today. This is the commutative This is the commutative property of addition because the operation that we're using is addition. The symbol we use is the plus sign. Let's look at number five. I see my parentheses, right? And we talked about today that the parentheses are groupings. Super, super important. So I'm also looking at the plus sign, and that symbol represents addition. So I know that it's going to be some property of addition. And we talked about that the groupings would have associative property of addition. And now let's look at this top part. You know, 16 plus 70 plus 8 is the same as 16, and then you grouped the last two, then I'm going to keep the same add-ins in the same order. So 16 plus 70 plus 8, and the only thing that changed was my groupings. This time, I have my parentheses here. I grouped 16 plus 70 and then I would add the eight. Here I will group 70 plus eight, then add in my 16. So whenever we're moving the parentheses or the groups, we're going to call that associative property of addition. Let's move on to this next. Maggie's class brought three books at the book fair. They bought three books. The books cost $15, $9, and $12. We're going to use parentheses to write two different expressions and find how much the class spent in all. Which property does the pair of expressions demonstrate? Okay, so my author's purpose, I need to find Um, two expressions, two numerical expressions. And to find, oh, that's supposed to be and, A-N-D, to find how much the class spent in all. Or total. Okay, can you see that? I'm going to cut. Oh, I forget. It doesn't enlarge unless I do it before we start. So, Maggie's class bought three books. And the cost of the books, $15 and $9 and $12. So, I am going to... to put, I know that this and, I'm gonna circle that context clues, right? Put a plus. So my context clues bought three books and then the cost 
of each is 15, 9, and that and means plus, because I'm combining them all, 12. So if I'm going to be combining, yes, you're right. I'm going to have 15 plus 9 plus 12. And so I can group the 15 and the 9 together. So what is 15 plus 9? Right, it's going to be 24, right? So if I took... 15, if I took five out of here to make that to 20, I'm gonna have four left over. So this makes it 20 plus 12, and that is going to be $32. So do that 15, nine, and 12. Okay, so I saw, I said 24, but then I wrote 20. So be super careful with that yourself. So then it makes it $36. So that's one equation, right? So this will equal 36. I'm going to balance out my equation and still have 15 plus 9 plus 12. I'm going to move my grouping and just move it over to the next group. 9 plus 12 is, very good, 21. Bring down my 15. And that equals to what? still the 36. So what property did I use when I moved my parentheses? Excellent, ding, 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 associated property. And I was trying to look for uh, my confetti, can't find it. So just pretend confetti. So we're using associative associative property of addition. Very good. Let's move over to number seven. Leo's basketball team makes 16 points in the first game. Wow, that's pretty good. 22 points in the second game and 18 points in the third game. Use the associative property of addition to show two different ways Leo can group the add-ins to show the total number of points. All right, so we're going to find author's purpose to find total points or number of points. So here, my context clues, I have 16 points in the first game, 22 points in the second game, and 18 points in the third. So the first one, it's the 16 plus 22 plus 18. I'm gonna show, I'm using associate, um, associated, um, associative property of addition. So I'm using my groupings. I'll do the first grouping. 16 plus 22. I'm going to go to my ones place. 2 plus 6 equals 8. Moving over to my tens place. 2 plus 1 equals 3. So that's 38 plus 18. 8 plus 8 equals 16. Regroup. 3 plus 1 is 4 plus 1 more is Five. Okay, so that was one way. And let me see if I can get my color pen so that you can see. This is one grouping. For the next grouping, I have 16 plus 22 plus 18. Bring those parentheses. Go to my ones place. 8 plus 2 is 10. Regroup my one. One plus two is three, plus one more is four. And I don't know why I did that, but let me go ahead. It's best to bring down my plus sign. I'm just gonna kind of erase this part right here, just so that you it doesn't look so 
There we go. So I'm going to bring down my plus in 16. 16 plus 40 is 56. Okay, very good. So here we showed the two different problems. Same problem, same add-ins, but the groups changed. And remember, associate, associated uh, property of addition is simply meaning that we're changing the groups. Let's flip it over to this next side. Which property is shown in the following equation? Okay, so look at the groups. It's very good. Ding, ding, ding. It's going to be associated property of addition. Got to look at our symbols. Number nine, Janelle rakes leaves for $8 per lawn. Wow, that's pretty good. Which expression can be used to find the amount she earns if she rakes 14 lawns? Okay, so she's $8 per lawn. Which expression can be used to find the amount she earns if she rakes 14 lawns? Okay, so I see, well, 8 plus 10, I see what they did here, but do we have 8 plus 10, which is 80, times 8 plus 4, which is 12? Does that make sense? No, because remember, we're going to have 8 times 14, and this is what you've learned in third grade and in fourth grade, so that makes no sense at all. So if the addition part doesn't make any sense, are we going to end up adding everything together? Nope, that doesn't make sense at all either. Do I have 8 times 10, which is 80 times 80 groups of 32? Does that make sense? Nope, not at all. But if I have this one and I'm going to redistribute my numbers, I'm going to have 8 times my 1. The value of the 1 in the tens place is 10. Then 8 times 4 that's in the ones place. So here we're going to be combining it. So this is the answer. Very good. Guys, we're rocking it along. Um, Sarah bought seven tickets to the school play. Each ticket cost $11. To find the total cost in dollars, she added the product seven times one to the product of seven times 10 for a total of $77. Which property did Sarah use for this? This is what you did in um, fourth grade, and you would have covered this in third grade too. Remember, and I just mentioned it when we did that, that we were distributing those. So it is the distributive property. We know it's not commutative, right? Because then it would have been seven times 10 equals 10 times seven. We know it's not associative because then it would have been seven times 10 times one, and that's grouping which would have been seven times group 10 times one. And that's not what we did. It's not identity property of multiplication, which in some classes we didn't reach, but that just means that you have that number times one equals that number, and that's all you have. So that won't work out. So the one thing that's left is the distribution property. There are six granola bars in each box. This is number 11. Which expression can be used to find the number of granola bars in a dozen boxes? Which is a dozen? Thinking of donuts. Very good. 12. Excellent. I'm going to place that 12 over dozen. So I have six of those. So I know I'm going to have six times 12, right? What is the value of this one, the digit one? Very good, it's 10. So I'm gonna have six times 10. I'm gonna add that to six times two. The value of the two in 12 is just two, it's two holes or two ones. So which one matches that? Very good, it's going to be B. Yippee, can't be A because I have an addition, we're not gonna add them all up and then multiply them, that doesn't work. Can't be C, 
because they're just adding them all together and we have six um, groups, six boxes, and in each box there's 12, so we know it's gonna be pretty big. And it can't be where we're gonna take the 60 and then we're gonna multiply that by 12. We don't have 60 groups of 12. That doesn't make any sense either. We don't have 60 boxes, so that makes no sense. So we're gonna cut that one. All right, so let's take a look at this last two. Let's take a look at number 12, multi-step. Karis Garden has four sections. All right, so all right, we've got four sections. Each section has seven rows of carrots and nine rows of celery. So I'm gonna sketch that out. I have one section. I have seven rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are carrots. Then she has nine rows of celery. Um, I'm going to use a different pen. I don't know what I did all my other color pens. So this is one, two, we'll say that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this was seven rows. And then here we have nine rows of celery. How many rows are in the garden? So this is one section. If I had three more sections, how would I figure that out? So our author's purpose is to find the total number of rows. I'm going to put pound sign, that means number, not just a hashtag, but number, total number of rows. Context clues, carrots and celery, seven and nine. So very good. So you're going to already have seven plus nine and you'll multiply that by four sections. Good job. So seven plus nine is what? Excellent. So I'm going to have 16 times four and that gives you Excellent, 64. She has a total of 64 rows. The seven, so if I had my context clues, and I, context clues, I had carrots, and I have celery. And here I have seven plus nine, that's 16, and then four, and then I have um, the sections. There's four of those. See how I'm doing that? And then I multiply that out. Four times six is 24. Regroup my two. Four times one is four plus two more is six. And this is total rows. The answer is eight. Let's look at the last one, multi-step. Max's school bought some boxes of pencils. Oh, that was nice. Each box holds 12 pencils. So they hold some pencils, right? The fourth grade classes need 25 boxes. And remember, each box holds 12 pencils. The fifth grade class need 22 boxes. How many pencils are needed by both grades? All right, author's purpose to find um, total number, I'm gonna put a pound sign, of pencils needed by both grades. Context clues. Okay, I know that fourth grade, they need 25 boxes. I know fifth grade, 
needs 22 boxes. So I'm going to combine those and makes it 47. Each box has 12. So now I'm going to multiply that out. There's a couple of ways. In fourth grade, you did two digit by two digit. Second grade, I think it's two digit by one digit that you finally work that out. But I'm going to, let's see, this is number 13. So let's do a couple of different ways. That was 47 times 12. Okay, so here I can simply have two times seven and two times 40. Then I'm moving over into my tens place. I can have 10 times seven, 10 times 40. This is going to be 14. I'm gonna kind of move that up. I have one zero, so I'm gonna put that into my product already, my partial product. Two times four is eight. I have one zero, so I'm moving it over here. One times seven is seven. I have two zeros for my factors. I'm gonna move those two zeros into my product and four times one is equals to four. Now I can add these up. 4 plus 0 is 4, 7 plus 1 is 8, and 8 plus 8 equals 16, 4 plus 1 equals 5. So that's one way that you can do it. The other one is standard form where you're starting in the ones place, move up, so it's 1, it's 2 times 7 equals 14. I'm regrouping. I'm going to hold or hide the tens because I'm not going to deal with that right now. Two times four, isn't that what we did here, which is like 40? So that's eight plus one more is nine. If you added these together, does that give you 94? Yes, it does. That's for the ones. Now I'm going to put zero is my hero because I'm done with my ones. I am done multiplying the ones place by the one and the tens cross this out because I'm complete. I'm moving over to the tens place. You see how I have that 10 there? I'm crossing back over. 10 times seven, that's what we did. We normally say one times seven, that's 70. Is that what we have right there? Absolutely. Now I have, we normally think 10 times 40, but we say one times four is four. Isn't that 400? That four, the value of that digit here is 400. If I added these up, that gives me the 470, which is in the tens place. Now I can add my partial products. That is four, nine plus seven is 16. Four plus one equals five. So the total number of pencils that they need is 564. As any time you need to pause it so that you can catch up, go for it. Again, this is where that's at. Pause it so you can see the difference. We're going to learn different ways. This is the goal, the standard form or standard algorithm. Guys, have a great, a great evening, and I will see y'all tomorrow. Good night.